Hello everybody, my name is Michael, and in today's video what we're going to be doing is this right here. So if that looks exciting to you guys, please carry on and watch the video. Oh, and just one more thing before we go. Please consider like, commenting, and subscribing if you enjoy the video. But now with all that out of the way, let's carry on with the video. Okay, so once we have everything all nice and primed, what we're going to be doing is we're going to start off with some barbarian flesh. Now, I just primed this up here with uh, just a nice simple uh, neutral grey here by Vallejo. And all we're going to be doing with the barbarian flesh that we're applying now is we're just going to be applying it everywhere it has the skin exposed, which is just on the face. So nice and easy step right here. So with Rob's face painted up, we can move on to our next step, which we're going to be using dirt spatter here. And for the dirt spatter, what we're going to be doing is we're just going to be applying it on his hair because uh, Rob Stark has a very uh, brownish hairstyle. I'm going to be adding in a little bit more of that uh, orange feel since he has part uh, Tully in there and they say he has a little bit of orange in his hair. So we're going for that brownie orange look and to start that off, we want to use dirt spatter. Okay, so now we have his hair painted in. What we're going to be doing is using electric blue and ultramarine blue. And what we're going to be doing is mixing them in a roughly 50-50 mix. So we've got this uh, nice mixture of blue here. And this is, of course, going to be used for the main part of his uh, clothing that he's wearing. So we want to make sure we get everywhere covered in that. So just being a little bit careful where we're applying this, but we can still be messy at this stage. Just applying it where we need to. Uh, so we don't have to tidy up too much in the later steps. So just being very careful and make sure you get into all those nooks and crannies so you can cover as much of the miniature as you possibly can. Okay, so now with this clothing all painted up, what we're going to be doing now is coming in with some charred brown. And the charred brown, what we're going to be doing with that, is we're going to be using that to base our fur. And so we want that nice color to start off our uh, fur that he's wearing. He's wearing a nice big uh, fur pelt over his cloak. So we want to start off with the darkest color to do with that, and charred brown is the best starting place for that. Okay, now with that fur base coated, what we're going to be doing now is coming in with some electric blue and some uniform gray, and we're also going to be mixing this in a 50-50 mix. And we're going to be using this for the main color of his cloak, because um, I didn't want it to be gray like I've done the rest of my Stark cloaks. I need him to stick out a little bit more. I mean, he's Rob Stark, he's the leader of the army. So mixing in just a little bit of blue will help separate him out from the battlefield when you have him uh, down there and it goes with that nice uh, house stark theme but being a bluish gray so just giving it a nice overall coat here okay so once we have all that dried and painted up what we're going to be doing now is moving on with some mahogany brown and the mahogany brown what we're going to be doing with that is we're just going to be applying it onto his uh, pants that he's got on here he's got some nice uh, sort of quilted style pants with a little bit of texture on there so we want to make sure we get that nice and covered just for that spot right there Okay, so once we have Rob Stark's pants all painted up, I'm going to come in now with some Necromancer Cloak. And what we're going to be doing with the Necromancer Cloak is we're going to be using that to be painting up Rob Stark's gloves and boots. So giving them a nice overall uh, coat of paint here, just being very careful to not get it too far over anywhere else. We don't want it to be since uh, Necromancer Cloak is quite a dark color and we want to spend a little time cleaning that up as possible. But it's okay at this stage, we're still in the base coating stage. Okay, now with the gloves and boots complete, we're going to come in now with some leather brown. And what we're going to do with the leather brown is we're just going to be applying it to his uh, belt that he has on here. So anywhere he's got sort of these leather belts, we want to be placing that. So I'm just being very, very careful not to paint over everything we've already painted. So just applying some paint very, very fine on these areas that we need to be placing this leather brown. Okay, now with his belt all painted up, what we're going to be doing now is moving on with some cavalry brown. And the cavalry brown, what we're going to be doing is we're just going to be applying it to the trim of his... Uh, main bit of clothing here he's got this nice uh, trim around there and rather than doing it a, a blue or anything like that i wanted to have a, a stick out color and cavalry brown being a reddish brown is going to really help with that and really uh, catch the eye to the whole piece and it's just going to add a little bit of balance to all the colors we've got going on here okay now with that trim all painted up i'm going to come in now with some castle gray and castle gray we're just going to be using to be base coating the rock that he's standing on giving a nice Overall coat, getting in all those nooks and crannies over that uh, nicely sculpted rock in there, and just avoiding the boots that we've already painted up on there as well. Okay, now we have that rock base coated. What we're doing now is coming in with some fur brown. And what we're going to do with the fur brown is we're just going to be uh, dry brushing a little bit onto his nice uh, fur cloak that he's got over top of his cloak, and giving that a good dry brush, really trying to get it, all those highlights with that fur brown, since it's a nice uh, separate color. From the brown it's going to help with that and as well as that we also want to use monster brown 
once that fur brown has dried to do the exact same thing and just go over top and it's going to add uh, dimension and color to all the bits of fur and make it come out more like realistic fur and of course don't forget the little pouch on the side as well that's also fur too so don't forget to do that as well okay now we have his fur all painted up what we're going to do now is come in with some khaki and what we're going to do with the khaki is we're just going to be using that to also just be applying just a teensy bit to the fur as well i'm also going to be doing it to just a little very light bit of the top the very sort of absolute raised edges on there just as well to add in just a little bit more variety of color too this is an optional step of course okay now with all that out of the way what we're going to do now is come in with some ash gray and what we're going to be doing is the same thing we did with the fur cloak is we're just going to be dry brushing it uh, over the miniature and this time it's only going to be over the rocks so just being really careful to avoid everywhere we've already painted especially with this part since it's close to the feet okay now we have that rock all done what we're going to do now is coming back in with some fur brow and this time all we're going to be doing is using it to just be picking out spots on uh, rob stark's head now of course uh like i said he has a bit of an orange uh tint to his hair so the fur brown is good for this it's brown with a little bit of uh, red and orange mixed in it gives it a bit more of an orange look and we just want to be picking out certain parts of the miniature to make it appear that he's got a, a really brownish hair color okay now we have his hair all painted up what we're going to do now is come in with some gun metal gun metal of course we want to be applying everywhere that he has his plate armor his chain mail everywhere he's got metal on basically is what we want to be aiming for except for he has some uh rings on his chest we don't want to be doing those just yet we're going to be leaving those and as well as the uh hilt of his sword we're going to leave that as well we just want to be doing the main part of the sword and his armor and the gun metal okay now we have his main metal parts done what we're going to do is come in with some greedy gold now now this is the parts where i told you to leave so we're going to be painting up the hilt of the sword in a nice gold color and as well as those uh rings on his chest we also want to be painting gold too we want him to stand out in the army and mo most starks don't have sort of a blingy sort of personality or anything like that but i think rob stark being the head of the army is going to make good choice of using some a little bit of flashy gold on there so that's why i'm choosing the gold to just do these little bits to highlight on the miniature here okay now with that gold all painted up it's time to do some washes i'm going to start off with flesh wash now flesh wash we're just going to be applying over the face and just on the hair as well since the flesh wash has a little bit of a, a red tone in it we want to bring out just a little bit more of that reddish tone to his hair as well so this is going to help out in the same spot okay so once that wash is dry what we're going to be doing now is moving on with some agrax earth shade now for the agrax earth shade pretty much we're going to be applying this over the entirety of the miniature except for the middle areas we don't want to be placing any of the agrax earth shade over any of the middle areas but we do want to be getting it over the fur the cloak his clothing even the rock that he's standing on we want to make sure we get a good coverage everywhere and we want to try and avoid serious pooling in areas as well so don't be afraid if it starts pooling a lot like it does here to continue moving it around or just come back in with a empty brush with none of the wash on it and just dab it a little bit and the paintbrush will suck up that little bit of wash okay so once our agrax earth shade is completely dry we can move on to our next step which is known oil now non oil of course is my favorite wash to apply over anything metallic so that's exactly what we we'll are doing here just applying it over all the metallic areas everywhere we've got the metal on I love the effect it gives off and adds a really nice realistic uh, wash down metal effect of it being sort of slightly worn out so just applying this everywhere over the metal and don't forget to avoid the pooling in the areas that we don't want it to be pooling in okay now with the known oil completely washed time to come back in with some barbarian flesh here and what we're going to be doing is just doing a few highlights on our miniature to really make it pop on the table so for rob stark we want to be just placing it everywhere the sun would sort of naturally hit but we want to be hitting the high points on the miniature so sort of the forehead the nose a little bit of the cheek just places like that being really careful to not go into anywhere that we don't want it to be okay and then now what we're going to be doing is we're going to come in now with that electric blue and uniform gray combo again that we had before to do our cloak and we're going to be applying it now over all the raised areas now this miniature has a lot of the raised areas all nice and picked out so you can really easily see where those raised points are so you can see where i'm naturally uh, placing all these highlights on and since that wash has darkened everything down coming back over with the original color it's just going to add that nice bit of highlight back into the miniature make it look like the sun's naturally hitting on there 
Okay, so now we have his cloak all picked out. What we're doing now is coming back in with our electric blue and ultramarine combo that we used on the main part of his clothing. So we want to come back and do that as well. And as you can see, there are a few uh, areas that are also highlighted up with sort of some wrinkles and folds in the clothing. So we would just want to be picking those out on the miniature as well. Okay, now with those highlights picked out, it's time to come back in with some mahogany brown. And of course, this is where we place it on the pants. So what I'm going to be doing is there's some nice sort of quilting pattern dot, uh, on these pants and all I'm going to be doing is just dotting it on in between that little uh, quilt pattern that we've got on here so it's being very very careful and just dotting in those spots to make it look uh, natural and realistic okay so once all that's picked out it's time to move on to our final highlights here and we're going to come in with some chainmail silver to do that and all we're going to be doing is picking out all the highlights on our middle areas so you can see here there's some nice raised parts that we can clearly and easily pick out with our chainmail silver and since our chainmail silver is so much brighter than our uh, metal that we already have on here it's going to be really shining and standing out on the piece giving that sort of real glorious look and with all that done now it's just time to paint up the base of the miniature here so i'm just going to be painting it and of course the nice stock standard black to give it that nice classic look now this is the point where you can uh, base it with the rest of your army to make it fit and match in but i'm just going with a simple black here just to show you guys and keep it nice and simple With all of that complete, we have now finished painting up Rob Stark from the Song of Ice and Fire miniatures game. And you can see he's quite a standout piece on the table, which is what we're trying to do since he's an awesome commander. And I hope this video has been helpful for you guys, whether you guys want to follow along like me, or you just enjoy me painting up some cool miniatures. So once again, I'd like to thank you all for watching. If you enjoy, please consider like, commenting, and subscribing, and I'll see you guys in the next video.